Very sound advice. Thank you for that. And up next, we have Stephanie O. Stephanie, if you would go ahead and unmute yourself, please. We'd love to have your question for Dr. Popper. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Dr. Popper. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, I have a quick question. So my father um, was successfully treated conventionally for prostate cancer. Um, and recently, he had a kidney infection, which affected his white blood cells. Is that in any way related to the, the, the um, prostate cancer treatment or, or anything? And is there anything he can do to get that back in, on track? Well, I don't know enough to actually answer the question. I don't know if they're related. They could be. Um, but um, the and abnormal numbers don't necessarily mean anything. This is some general advice I can give you, too, is that every abnormality doesn't demand some type of action to be taken. Um, but having said that, if, there, if there's something going on, uh, you pay attention to it. And again, the same advice would prevail. You look at all the options uh, and, and pick the best. And, um, and, and sometimes some problems just resolve on their own. Um, uh, so I, I wish I could be more specific, but without any, I, I mean, it's just very difficult to treat lab numbers without context, but uh, I would just encourage the same type of investigation. And it's difficult to get people to do. Um, you know, one of the comments people will make to me sometimes is, well, that sounds like it's gonna take a lot of time. My answer to that is you have no idea how much time it takes to fight to save yourself from a terminal disease if you don't do these things, right? Because you, this, people don't just one day wake up and usually have some type of serious illness going on. Usually there's a period of time where they're careening toward that. So taking the time to look into all aspects of your health and any decision that you make, I just can't emphasize that enough. Thank you so much for that, uh, Dr. Popper. And I'm going to go ahead and ask Sophia to unmute, please. Hi, doctor. Thank you so much. Um, my question is, um, what do you think about immunotherapy? Um, I think it's expensive. Um, and that makes it real sexy to oncologists. That's the first thing. Uh, there's a mentality of new is better, expensive is better. Um, I found it very interesting that the FDA that takes $2 billion a year from drug and device makers with an approval uh, rate of 96%, which I'd just love to see the 4% they're turning down. That must be choice stuff, right? They have actually convened a meeting to look at immunotherapies that they think may be overused. I almost fell off my chair when I read this because they, they almost never considered doing anything to limit the sale of anything that drug companies make. So, um, I, I, you know, I think that there's been a great deal of over-promising and under-delivering. And I also think the side effects have been minimized because um, the side effects of immunotherapy sometimes include the development of life-threatening autoimmune diseases and these side effects, the doctors don't know about it but I've read in a number of published case reports where people have ended up in a hospital because they developed type one diabetes, for example. Nobody told them that this was a risk factor for the immunotherapy that they were getting and uh, ended up in a life-threatening situation like overnight type one diabetes. So I think there's been a great deal of over-promising and under-delivering. I wouldn't rule them out, but because uh, I think, I wanna say this too as a qualifying statement, Almost all of what we do in medicine, there's some application for it. The key is not over application of it, if that makes sense. So finding those situations in which it truly has benefit, but looking at it from the standpoint of drug companies, they make billions and billions of dollars when they find a way for everybody to need it. That's the game that they play and that's problematic. Thank you so much for that. And we do have another question from Paul. Paul, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Yes, hello. Yes, I'm, I'm speaking from Sweden in all places. So hi. Uh, I just wanted to know in America, you know, this is very interesting about the history of, of, um, of Hoxie, because I knew about Hoxie myself, because I actually have, I had cancer. I still have a little bit of cancer left. But, but anyway, I wanted to know, um, 
because you 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 do so much with sort of uh, representing um, uh, sort of these natural alternative methods, and in in the in the ways of government, maybe I don't know. But will there ever be any situation you think in the future where all this sort of persecution of 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 people that do something different will live, will will go away? I mean. In, in 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 America, because I we learned so much about America, but will it ever go away? Or do you think this is going to go on forever? Do you understand my question? Or, I do, and yes. um, and we don't have a lot of time, but I will tell you this: uh, some of you know that um, based on many things that are going on today, um, I've become very uh, outspoken and active. In, um, in filing lawsuits and, and that sort of thing against government agencies, government officials. And we've only just begun. Uh, you, you have, uh, if, if you're a government official watching this, you have no idea what you've unleashed here. And I'm not talking about just me. I'm talking about a, a whole bunch of me's, which is your worst nightmare. But um, inherent in what's going on, um, you know, sometimes uh, something that occur that appears to be a terrible thing becomes a blessing. I'm sure you've all had this happen in your life where you look back and say, that was really difficult, but if that hadn't happened, this wouldn't happen, right? Well, in, the, in this current COVID mess in which we find ourselves right now, um, there are a couple of things that the government has done that are colossally stupid. I'm not gonna tell you what they are because that would spoil the surprise and fun we have coming. But I will tell you, they've done a lot of stupid things, but a couple of them colossally stupid. I would like to think that if I were in charge of this whole thing, I would have been smart enough not to do it. And, um, and they have provided an incredible opportunity for us to do exactly what you're proposing here, which is to possibly start to undo the cartel. Um, using their own actions against them. I mean, it's just a, a, when you look at it, you can't believe that you've been delivered uh, such a gift. So what I'll tell you is stay tuned. And uh, soon, not during this conference, but maybe at next year's conference, I'll have some really interesting things to say about this because we'll be well down the path of doing what I'm talking about. Thank you for that. Uh, I I think we have time for maybe just one more quick question if we can go ahead and unmute Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Oh, Michelle. Thank you so much. Uh, just really quickly, um, I understood the um, external uh, treatment of Hoxi was by paste, but how was the internal administered? Was it decocted in, into a liquid that they drank? Yeah, it was, a, it was a tonic that you drank. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll just mention here, you know, so you've heard people say watching my videos, I put out videos every week and a newsletter free. You're welcome to subscribe. My email address is pampopper at msn.com. And our website is wellnessforumhealth.com. You can see all the various things that we offer. And um, I thank you so much for having me. This is one of my favorite things every year. And I hope we'll be all together in the same room next year when we do this. But however we do it, I think that uh, we all owe a great debt of, gratitude, uh, a debt of gratitude to Steve and his staff that make this fabulous event possible every year and um, bring a lot of great ideas to the public that much needed in today's healthcare environment. So thanks so much. Mm -hmm.